Okay, uh, this is dmactennis.com, and we're going to talk about singles strategy and positioning on the court. And this is going to help you uh, to know what to do at certain areas of the tennis court. Hey everybody, this is dmac at dmactennis.com. And uh, I'm, first I want to give uh, a shout out to my daughter. She's behind the camera. She's 10 years old. And she's helping me uh, create this video. She's got a beautiful smile and I'm grateful that she wanted to help out. And this is what motivates me to help you guys out there in tennis. Now, um, what I want to share with you today is single strategies and positioning on the court. There's three areas that I want to talk about right here. One is the back court, no man's land, and then the net area. And it's really important to understand why these three areas are. Because so this way, if you know what area you're in, uh, you can properly execute the shot that is on in that in that particular area. It's really important to know what to do in those areas. And so I'm going to give you an overview a little bit and then I'll I'll get down to specifics, okay? Now when you're playing. It all depends on what type of player you are. Uh, when I was playing on the tennis tour, I was a servant volleyer. I was an aggressive player. I always tried to capitalize on the net to put pressure on my opponent, especially on big points like 30-30 uh, or 40-30 or 30-40. Or Whatever it is, uh, if it was deuce or advantage, anytime there was a close, close in the game, I would try to uh, impose um, some pressure on my opponent because that's really important you know uh, a lot of the game is mental but also physical it's an amazing game so here are the areas now I'm gonna start back here in the backcourt now some people call that region one okay region one region one and then this might be R2 and then R3 Regardless of how you call it, when I was playing tennis, it's very simple. This is the backcourt. This is no man's land. Halfway between, um, you know, the net and and the baseline. Okay. So the backcourt is where really where all the game starts after you've served or returned a serve. The backcourt, all you're trying to do is hit the ball over the net three to five feet. Why three to five feet? When you get clearance over the net, you're going to end up hitting the balls past the service line. And the, the deeper you are, the more you're going to put your opponent on a defensive because the further they are, the more likely they're going to hit you a short ball, which will bring you in to hit the next shot and hopefully you execute it in a proper way uh, that you win the point. That's the objective is setting up the point. So when you're on the backcourt, what you're doing here is trying to hit the ball deep so you get a short ball into no man's land and eventually you get into the net area and put away the ball. Now, at the backcourt, what your concentration should be in this area right here, your concentration should be keeping the ball deep. Okay? Today, in today's tennis, a lot of players hit, hit a lot of ball. They punish the ball from the backcourt, trying to trying to cripple the opponent somehow. And that's fine and dandy, but really, if you're a player like, a, like Bjorn Borg in those times, in the olden times, but players that uh, kept the ball in play a long time here, um, they're basically what they're called as counter punchers. Basically, they're gonna counter what you give them. So if you keep the ball high and deep over the net, uh, you can stay here all day long because really, uh, no one's gonna hit you any winning shots. The minute that they step inside a no man's land on the other side, then you open up the angles and they're going to punish the balls to the side or the left to move you outside the court, and that's the purpose, okay? But on the back court, all you have to do is keep the ball three to five feet over the net and deep. You want the balls to land in this area right here. Or further. Why? That keeps your opponent back, okay? And that brings you into no man's land. Now, you don't ever want to get caught in no man's land. 
It's kind of like the three second rule in basketball where you can't be inside that circle because if you're in there for longer than three seconds, there's a foul, right? And you know, it's a free throw or the opponent uh, gets to take out the ball. So, the, you know, you want to use a three second rule. You don't really want to be here longer than three seconds, okay? But what you do here is really important. So now you're hitting the ball back and forth and you're keeping it deep, three to five feet. Now you get a ball in no man's land, and in no man's land, what you do there is you set up the ball, and what I call it is, is a place where you cripple the opponent, all right? You throw them off balance. This is where you bring it in, because from there, you're gonna move into the net area, okay? So from here, basically when you're in no man's land, what a lot of players do, club players, is they hit the ball from no man's land and they move back. Why do they move back? Well, because they don't have the necessary skills or the necessary tools in tennis to move in and hit volleys. Most club players don't get very good at volleys, but if you practice, of course, your next step is to move in and hit the volley. So for the most part, you're gonna hit a back court. From the back court, you're gonna hit it three to five feet. You're looking for a short ball, anything to land in no man's land where you only want to stay there within three seconds, okay? Not longer than that. You get into no man's land and you punish it. You either hit the ball in one of the corners, deep. Depending on who your opponent is, you might want to hit it deep to the backhand side. Most opponents' backhands are weak. Now, great players, good players, have a very good backhand. It's important to have a good backhand, an excellent backhand, so that you can pass, because why? Most people have decent forehands, but really, most of the time, uh, today's players, a great forehand is really an essential tool in punishing your opponent. But from here, you hit the ball to the backhand, depending if you're playing a right-hander or left-hander, okay? If you're not sure, hey, you can come in and punish the ball, and this might be a surprise, but you can hit it directly down the center. Why? You take away the angles, of course, you got to hit it hard enough and deep enough if you're going to hit it there because you take away the angles. A lot of players are afraid to hit it down the middle, but hey, you could be tall, playing a tall guy. But for the most part, you hit it to the backhand, hit it a couple times to the backhand, see how the person reacts, and then you move in. From no man's land, you're probably going to hit one volley to set it up, or if you hit it really good, you come in and you step inside the net area and you execute a volley depending on where they hit. Now, what's really important too is once you hit a ball from here, you might step right here just between the service box close to the net area and, and, and before they hit the passing shot you move in closer or inside there. But you don't want to close too much into the net unless you know that your opponent is off guard. In other words, they're off balance, okay? So you move in. So these three areas. Now let me tell you th three things that you have to do, okay? In the net area, it's a must. You must put the ball away. Within two to three balls, the ball needs to be put away or this is what's gonna happen if you're playing a decent player. You're gonna get either passed or lobbed. And that puts a lot of pressure on you and most players that are in the net area, if they don't execute correctly, they'll miss the volley. But in this area, you put it away. You put away. You put away the ball in this area. In the net area, you put it away. You finish the ball, you finish it to win. Otherwise, you're passed, okay? In no man's area, all you're doing is crippling the opponent. You're setting up the shot so that you can step in the net area and put it away. I can go and bury good details depending on what, who you're playing on the other side. But for the most part, on the backcourt, you keep the ball in play three to five feet over the net. And when you get a short ball, you make sure you cripple the opponent by hitting to the, to the backhand or to the forehand, depending on where their strengths are, okay? For the most part, you'd probably play their backhand side, okay? And if they're right-handed, you'll hit it right there. And then you kind of sit back a little bit just before the hit, you step in and get ready to hit the ball into the other side. And it should only take you one to two volleys to put it away, not more than that. And then... Of course, when you're playing the volleys, you should have a good overhead smash. That's basically it. Is right here, all you're doing is you're hitting the ball back. You don't need to put any pressure. You don't need to hit any winners. All you have to do is not miss. Just keep the ball in play. In no man's land, you cripple the opponent. 
You set up the shot so that you can put it away when you get to the net area. In the net area, you have to put the ball away in two to three volleys. Actually, one to two volleys, excuse me. Three sometimes if you don't put it away. But really, if you get to more than two, you're in trouble. And the reason why you put it away here is because you got the whole court. The closer you are to the net, the more angles you have. See, and that's why you need to put it away. It takes the play out of the opponent. You take away the play from the opponent from putting you out. out. But when you're hitting it here, you hit it to the right. If you have to hit another ball, you want to make sure you keep it deep. Or you're hitting an approach shot, depending on what type of game you are. Those are the three areas, and it's really simple. There's nothing sophisticated about it. Here, you don't try to do too much. You set up the ball. Here, you cripple and punish the ball in a way that you get a weak shot in a net area. You put it away, and that's it.